Hello all, welcome to the Embedded IoT Linux for Red Blue Teams at Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we are going to be bringing all the components we've created so far, put it on the SD card and boot the device to make sure that everything actually works. So the formatting of the SD card is identical to what we did in previous videos which is we have a boot partition, which is FAT32 formatted, where we are going to have MLO, U-boot, IMG, UENV.txt. Then we have the second partition, which is called kernel, which is ext4 formatted. And this contains the Linux kernel image, which is Z image, and the device tree binary, which is am 33 5x bone black DTP. Finally, we have the root file system partition, which is also ext4 formatted. And this contains BusyBox and all the other utilities we have copied out so far, or we have created so far. Now, there are multiple ways by which you can partition. You can you know, put in either a new SD card or the old one, and then recreate the partitions. In this video, what I'm going to do uh, instead is actually to insert the old card, and I'm just going to delete the files from the existing partition so that I can use it as is without formatting. Or you know what, <laughs> let me format it. Keep changing my mind. Okay. So let's make it easy. We'll just reformat it. So I think the first thing to actually do is assign the device to the VM. So we notice moment the assignment works, we see all the three partitions open up. Now I'm going to use gparted, which we have seen before. And I'm going to use this to format the SD card. So I'm going to select the SD card, here it is, dev SDC, and I can see the existing partitions. I'm just going to do unmount on them, because you can only reformat it yeah, once we unmount it. Okay, now I'm going to format this to FAT32. I'm going to format this to ext4. I'm going to format this to ext4 as well, right? So let me just go ahead and do that formatting. After that, we'll just relabel the partitions and make sure the boot flag is still applied. Uh, to the FAT32 partition and then we'll begin copying out the utilities, uh, the, the different components of the firmware which we have created so far. Okay. So the formatting is all completed, great. Let's label the partitions. So this is boot This is kernel. And this is root FS, which is root file system. Let me apply the name change. And then I'm just going to make sure that the boot flag is still enabled. There it is. Okay. Great, now I'm going to close gparted and hopefully the partition should all get like mounted. Uh, we can already see them over here. So here is the kernel, and then finally rootfs. So all of these have been mounted and they should be available. This is where we left off in the last video. So let me actually go inside the step five directory.
Now all the partitions should be mounted here. You can see that boot kernel and root FS. Fantastic. Now the next step of course is to get all of these components in one place uh, in all the components you've compiled. So what I've done is I've created a very simple script called get firmware components. So if I do an ls star right now, you'll actually see that the directories like uh, you know kernel, mlo, uboot, etc. are all empty. Then all we have to do is run get firmware components and this copies all of those from they are uh, output directories over here. There you go. Now we can see the DTB file, the Z image, MLO, and all the other stuff in here as well, right? uboot.img. Great. So now we need to copy out the files into the SD card. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do copy. Let's copy out MLO first into media IoT boot. Similarly, I'm going to copy out uBoot and finally we have to copy out uenv.txt. Now the base uenv.txt which I had created uh, kind of assumed that we only have two partitions. One is for the OS and everything and the other uh, is basically uh, where the file system resides. So what I've done is we just have to make one small change. Let's open up uenv.txt in gedit. Okay. So the device type for booting is MMC and this is MMC device zero as we already know. That's the SD card slot. And the partition where the Z image and the device tree are is the second partition, right? So there you go. So the boot dir is slash, the boot file name is Z image. Similarly, FDT is also present in the same root directory, which is uh, the flattened device tree file. So based on this, let's actually copy out uh, into the next directory. Okay, hold on. Let's discuss this file first. Now, after that, we have the boot arcs. This is something we've seen. Now, the key change here is we have three partitions and the root file system is in the third partition. Now, we've seen in previous videos how to set all of this up. So, I'm just going to change it to P3. So, it's in the third partition. After that, we are just echoing, you know, Pentester Academy custom embedded Linux boot. And then we have the UENV command to make sure that uh, we are going ahead and loading up the images and then going ahead and booting the images. So I'm going to copy out this modified uenv.txt to media IoT boot. Okay. So you have to make sure that in uenv.txt we uh, kind of mention that the root file system is there in the third partition. Okay, that's all we've changed. Now that we've done that, the next step is to copy out the kernel and DTB to the second partition named kernel. So to do that, let's do a sudo copy kernel z image to media kernel uh, media IoT kernel. Now I'll leave it to you an exercise to figure out why we could copy directly MLO, uboot, etc. But we're using sudo in this case. So you will get an interesting insight if you find the answer. If you don't use sudo, you'll actually get permission denied. So figure out the answer. Tweet it to me if you can. <laughs> I'm security tube on Twitter. So we have copied the kernel Z image. Similarly, let's actually copy the DTB file, device tree file. There you go. So we've copied this as well. So now if we look at our presentation, we have set up the boot partition properly. The kernel partition is also set up properly. Remaining is the root file system where we will have to go ahead and 
untar everything out and copy it out okay so let's go ahead and do that so where is the root file system well we have this inside this folder rootfs.tar.exe i also have created a simple cheat sheet so you remember the command with tar so all you have to do is sudo tar dash c that c basically means change into that directory in our case it's media iot uh, followed by rootfs okay and then a dash xvjf followed by uh, the rootfs tar exe file which will be file system rootfs tar exe so what this is going to do is pick up the root file system file and this contains you know the compressed file system that entire structure and copy this out to media iot root fs so i'm going to hit an enter you see after this if you look at media iot and do a star you'll actually see that the entire root file system structure has now gotten copied out to media iot root fs right uh, one of the exercises i already told you figure out why lost and found lost plus found automatically appears in both media iot kernel and media iot root fs okay so with this we have pretty much set up our uh SD card with all the files that we now require to boot our custom image. The next step is to go ahead and load this on the BeagleBone Black and make sure it boots from the SD card and to monitor that booting. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to connect my UART cable and then I'm going to make sure that it is assigned to the VM. So here is my FTDI cable. Let me assign it to the VM. And I am going to ensure that the device has actually been selected. There you go. Great. Now, let me set up my BeagleBone Black. I'm going to make sure I unplug my SD card, put it in and uh, power it up. And before that, Let's open up our console port. In my case, all the settings are already in there, which is dev TTY USB 0, 11520, 8 and 1. I'm going to expand this. I'm going to pause the video while I. Okay, my UART cable, everything is plugged in. I'm going to make sure that I press the boot key down and then I'm going to power up my BeagleBone Black. And there you go. If you notice the auto boot now automatically kind of shows us like the 10 second countdown, which is what we had set. And beautifully, we are able to boot into the system. There we go. So if you notice, this clearly tells us that, you know, this was actually compiled on April 15th, which is today. And if we scroll up, we should be able to see the same thing show up for uh, U-Boot SPL, etc. So if you notice, uh, we have U-Boot SPL 2018. It was compiled April 15th, 2018 which in turn reads the U-boot image, and then we have, you know, the larger U-boot executing, the second stage, uh, where we again see it's April 15th, UENV.txt got, you know, kind of read successfully. Here is our custom message, Pentester Academy custom embedded Linux boot. Uh, here are the boot arguments which we had set and then the kernel boots up just as expected. Fantastic. So what this proves is that all those little steps which we had done meticulously, as long and painful as they were, have finally culminated to allow us to create our own custom firmware where we have separated out all of these components. So 
I would say if you finish till here, you know, congratulate yourself because I think this is a great task which has been accomplished. You could literally now fine tune every single component, like go inside the U-Boot directory, run menu config, configure, add more commands, or go to the kernel, do something, and just pretty much drop the new kernel or drop the new U-Boot or overwrite, you know, with a new file system onto the SD card. And now you have a full blown uh, experimental system where you can create your own embedded IoT firmware. Great. The, the screenshots here pretty much show the, the exact steps. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I think, you know, this is, this is where uh, we've kind of been successful after the last couple of videos where it was pretty painful to down uh, to go ahead and you know compile everything so uh, this video makes me really happy i hope uh, you know you're happy too so that's all for this video thanks a lot see you in the next one